We live drums. Hello, I'm Gary France, and welcome to our continuing series on percussion pedagogy and education videos. Today's discussion is about the bass drum, the gran casa, the grossa tramo, the largest member of our percussion family. The bass drum, we think of this or orchestration-wise as the lowest non-pitched sound that you might have in the orchestra, certainly in the percussion section. It's the lowest non-pitched sound. What do I mean by non-pitched sound? Well, I mean that we don't actually have a pitch set in the drum. It's not an A, it's not a B flat. It, it's meant to be a nondescript pitch that adds and surrounds the lowest section of the orchestra acoustically. It can sound thunderous, it can sound punchy. John Philip Sousa once said that the bass drum player in his band was the highest paid member of the band because it was the most important player in terms of keeping the rhythm and the soul of the march. Could really infect uh, and affect the, uh, the style and the groove of, of the concert band. Now, in the orchestra, it's very important that the Gran Casa is played in a musical manner. It's not just something that we, th you know, thwack the heck out of. It's, it's a beautiful instrument that needs to be controlled, and you can't let it control you. Let's talk a little bit about the family of, of bass drums. Of course, they come in a wide variety of sizes and shapes, as you can see here, and different kinds of stands. Okay? The first bass drum that you might encounter may have a stand like this. This is a folding, I call it a tripod stand. There may be some other names for it. And I have on it a 1930s drum. This is a drum by the Leedy Manufacturing Company. Not unlike what you might find in the pit of a Gilbert and Sullivan show or something like that. Let's see if we can get a good view of it. I think that'll be pretty good. And this bass drum, you can tune it. You'll notice that on one side of the drum we have hooks or cleats, okay, or claws, and on the other side we have tuning lugs right here where we can tune it. So we would normally play the drum on the non-tuning lug side so that you don't get these tuning lugs smacking you in the arm. We of course with all percussion instruments we have to talk a lot about the beaters and equipment that we use. And I have a wide selection of beaters here that uh, you might have a look at, ranging from the very largest type of a beater like this to a very small wooden beater. Of course, the sound of the bass drum includes a lot of harmonic material. It includes a fundamental sound, a low sound, and it includes a lot of harmonic content. So it has a tremendous dynamic range. Now this small bass drum, perfectly suitable and what you may find in a small concert band or a small orchestra, and we should talk a little bit about, about what is our relationship of our body to the instrument and how do we do that? Rule number one, control the drum. Do not let the drum control you. What does that mean? Well, if you were to play the drum like so, just standing back here like this, am I controlling that drum? I think not. I can't dampen it. I can't really affect the sound that I'm doing much other than just playing it. So many times I've seen people just hitting the drum like that sort of in time and, and without really controlling our sound. So for our young people who are going to play, let's talk about the fundamentals of the bass drum. First of all, we have two skins. We have one on the right side and the left side that we need to control. For the purposes of this particular um, example, I'm going to shift to one of our other bass drums that we have. I'll just set down our small bass drum, put our stand over here. Now behind me, we see three bass drums of varying sizes, okay? This is a 36-inch bass drum. The skins on these drums, we have calf, calf heads, 
which are cowhide or from a water buffalo or, but these are particularly Irish calf. And, um, and this drum skin over here is, is a synthetic skin by the Remo company called um, Fiber Skin. And it's meant to emulate the sound. It's emulating the sound of a calf head. The, the challenge, of course, with calf heads is that with humidity and with the, the level of humidity, you can have great variations. So in marching bands and things on the field, they almost always use a synthetic skin. Now the drum we're going to demonstrate for you is our concert bass drum, the Grand Casa, this big daddy right here. This is a 40 inch bass drum. The skin's quite expensive to buy this quality of calf skin, over a thousand dollars a skin, and of course they have a beautiful elastic quality in their sound. When we talk about how to control the drum, well, this is on a rolling stand, which is very helpful. And as well as rolling, we can loosen it and we can tilt this bass drum. It will tilt a full 360 degrees, so you can play on either skin that you like. Now, the disadvantage of something like a, like a calf skin, of course, is that you could easily put a stick through it and damage it. Okay, so we have to be careful with what we play with it. But you can see, you can see how challenging this would be for a little person to really get in and control the drum. Again, we can't really see them playing, playing like this. We really want to control it. Okay, before we talk a little bit about dampening, which is a big topic with bass drums, let's talk about tuning. You want to tighten the lugs. You notice that on this bass drum, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, we have 16 lugs, 16 tension rods that are T-shaped tension rods that we can tighten the drum with. And basically the other skin has 16, so we have 32 points of tension. That's a lot of tuning. What we do is we try to have one head a little bit higher pitched than the other. Some players say that they like the non-beating head, okay, in this example, my left skin, to be a minor third higher than the right skin, or thereabouts. What does that do for you? Well, it gives you the most overtones. It increases our harmonic material so that we don't have a prevalence of a pitch in the bass drum. You can spend a lot of time tuning it, and I would encourage you to do this with your students and uh, with the various bass drums that you have in your school and your orchestra, because it's very important. Almost every piece has bass drum or grand casa in it that you may play in an orchestra. So the combination of bass drum, triangle, and cymbals, of course, became the mainstay of, of a lot of our repertoire, that Janissary or Turkish influence that I'll talk about a little bit later when we talk about the cymbals and the triangle. Now onto the bass drum in terms of controlling. How do we control the sound and not let it control us? Well, for years, we need to think about how we can get onto this drum and control it and, and create uh, a sense that, that I'm on all parts of the drum. The first thing I might grab, and I'm just gonna swing around here to the other side, is a good old chair. Now this chair, you can see it's, it's just a regular chair. You know, I'll hold it up there a little bit. It's just a regular chair that you might have in the orchestra or a concert band or, or you know, in any classroom really. And what we're gonna do as the bass drummer, we're gonna get in here and we're gonna put our leg up on the chair so we can, we can see that, that all of a sudden I'm in a situation where my leg is on, the, my foot is on the chair, my leg is around the bass drum, and I'm able to take my knee, my knee right in here, and it's, and it's, it's this part of the knee right in here that you can see. This part of the knee actually comes in contact with the drum. So watch me, I'm gonna bring it in. Now, believe it or not, your knee, you can really control the amount. It's like we have anything from the surface of just the bony part of your knee all the way up to your full leg on the drum. 
you can see that that can really control the sound. Where do you play the bass drum? Okay, well in conjunction with dampening we'll talk about beating spots. First of all, you can take your bass drum like so and we think of the bass drum in three concentric circles. We have the center of the drum, which is the nodal point. That's the point where there's no vibration. Of course there's some vibration, but you'll hear that it, it's got a little point to it, and as I show you the other points, uh, places on the drum, you'll hear a, a profound difference. So the center, and we would draw a little circle around that center point. Then we have roughly a third into the bass drum, another circle. And here, we're getting a lot more harmonic content out of the bass drum. And then we have the very edge, which is a higher pitched sound. So in order to get a beautiful sound, we want to get a nice punch we want to have some low harmonic content in there, so we're going to try and get all of that in our, in our strike. Now, in addition to using a chair, you don't, you, if the chair is too high for a young person, we could use something like this. This is just a wooden block that I had our custodian knock up. It's just made out of uh, particle board. It's just really a rectangle, rectangular block of wood. And you have two heights. We have that height where it's sitting on, or of course we can knock it down and we have a lower height for the bass drum, okay? For me, I'm a little bit taller, so I'll have it up on the high height. And you can see that this allows me to really have a nice comfortable, a nice comfortable position with my leg. My left hand here, I'm going to reach around and give this bass drum a lovely cuddle. I've got, I've got my hand in here, so now my left hand is on the, on the other head, and it's in here like this, so it's actually on the skin. I'm able to come around the bass drum, put my knee in here, and you can really hear, I'm going to open it up. I'm going to dampen it down a little bit at a time. To a very dry sound. So there's a lot of variation in there. I'm sure you'll agree. Now the question is, where do I put my music stand in relation to the uh, bass drum? I'm going to ask uh, my colleague Carrie to just grab me a music stand over there and we'll show you where that goes. It's important in all things that we do, and we'll have a little short video on, on sight lines and conductors, but with bass drum and percussion, again, we're still playing everything. Here we go. Thank you, Carrie. We're still playing everything as you might say, at the end of a one-foot club. So let's say this is our music that we're going to play. If we had the stand like so, and we were playing the bass drum like this, what's our problem here? Well, you know, I'm looking at the music over there, I'm playing the bass drum here, a real recipe for disaster, right? And we have to think about where is the conductor. So normally what we would do is we put our bass drum stand, our music stand, up nice and high. My eyes are right about here. This is my eyes. So what I'm going to do is have my eyes, just the music stand is a little bit below my eyes, and then in the distance I'm seeing the conductor. So at this point, my eyes are on the music. I can see my bass drum where I'm playing it. I can read my music, and I can see the conductor. different sounds. This drum has a few little rattles in it that I'm hearing, and you want to go around your drum and check because, of course, creating these low frequencies, you're going to have rattles. So we spend a lot of time working on the drum. Make sure that your, your, your wheels are locked down and that they're tight. 
I also put uh, some moleskin or or something around or some felt around the inner bearing edge sometimes, and we make sure that every contact point can uh, can stop rattles. And with a little bit of, of adjustment, you can get really some terrific. Uh, terrific sounding bass drum. Now this particular beater is quite a heavy beater and um, you can see uh, I had a wide selection of beaters. If I am to take a lighter beater, here's one that is covered with chamois and what I'll do is I'll, I'll move my music stand in here so you can get a good look at what this, this one looks like. You can see here that this is a, a standard beater but it has a round wooden ball with a piece of chamois over the top. And this one's made by Tom Gauger, a wonderful percussionist from Boston. And he makes a wide selection of bass drum beaters. And this particular one will deliver us a much more articulate sound in the bass drum. versus that big soft sound here. You can really hear the difference. But if we were to play something in the orchestra that required more articulation, and there are many orchestral excerpts that come to mind, but Right now, I'm just going to make up a little, a little selection. This time, you'll notice that I'm playing with my left hand in the traditional grip because I'm able to address the drum here. Or I can roll in match grip. Now, if you're in a situation where you can't actually dampen the drum with your foot, which, which I, could, I could try and do by, by just bringing it in a little bit. Let's see if I can bring my leg in here. I think this, this will be pretty good. We're getting the articulation. I'm able to dampen it. There are some products available that, that are like a, uh, a muffler that you can actually strap onto the bass drum that take away some of the ring. Um, and some people also use a towel. You can also go to, for more articulation. I have wooden beaters, and these, these are just standard wooden beaters. They really sound terrific. And um, there's a time and place, of course, for all of these different kind of beaters. This will be even more articulate than the chamois. So there you have it. The bass drum, a big unruly animal that we need to control. We need to feel that, that we're, we're a part of it and that uh, together we make great music, the bass drum and the player. I'd like to thank you very much for, uh, for tuning in on our bass drum video and look forward to some of our further ones. Thank you. We live drums.